Welcome to Should I Read It? Should I Read It is a weekly podcast that takes a deep dive into books. I'll provide a summary of the book and tell you how the ideas in the book relate across all the books we've covered so far. Welcome to Should I Read It? Today we have something just a little bit different. My friend Adam wanted to review my book, and that's what we're going to bring you today. Adam's review of my book. Now this is his review totally. I... I'm going to go edit it a little bit, but I'm not going to edit it for content. I might edit some of the audio for quality issues, and that's it. So this is his take on my book. I hope you enjoy it. I hope I enjoy it. I hope it turns out well. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Should I Read It podcast. This is the weekly podcast where Curtis McHale takes a deep dive into a book and makes a summary of it. Right now, you are likely wondering why Curtis is not voicing this episode. Simple answer, this episode is on his book. The Art of Focus. So, who is this guy hijacking his podcast? My name is Adam Tuck. I'm a guy who's been all over the map in my methods, but consistent in wanting to better myself. I want more out of life than the paycheck-to-paycheck existence. I've spent a fair bit of time reading the same type of books that have been reviewed in Should I Read It? I have always worked for someone else successfully, and I've always been attempting some sort of business on the side, from investing in other businesses trying to build my own to multi-level marketing. I have finally landed on real estate uh, investing to get me out of the air quote rat race. I'm also a friend and occasional running partner of Curtis, so I will try my best to be unbiased. So we all have varying degrees of issues focusing on work, and we all recognize the high value that correctly focused blocks of time can bring. The art of focus is more than simply on how to focus on the task at hand. It's about how to find the right task to focus on. It brings to mind a concept from Curtis's favorite author, said tongue-in-cheek, Stephen R. Covey. If you spend time climbing the ladder of success, it's painful when you find out it's leaning on the wrong wall. So the Art of Focus is set up in three parts to help you achieve what you truly want, to find the right wall for you, and how to make it make sure that it will work. Section 1. Purpose Meets Passion. It's got parts on finding your focus and planning your ideas. Section two is finding your time. That has to do with time management, time blocking, and dealing with distractions. And section three is testing your ideas. You might love the idea, but you might be the only one willing to pay for it. This section is about how to test your ideas and see if it can get traction. The Art of Focus is naturally written from Curtis's point of view through his experiences. It is definitely slanted toward a client-based business where you provide a service that is a solution to someone else's problem. That being said, the majority of the lessons can be applied to other types of business and even personal life. Curtis combines the personal and professional in this book as his personal goal is to have a great business without sacrificing his family. And that is the crux of part one called Purpose Meets Passion. This section is where you need to start. You probably have a bunch of ideas of how to get there, but this section is about where is there? What wall do you want your ladder against? What is success for you? Curtis takes you through the process of building your filter documents. Now this is a document that will eventually get you to figure out what you truly want and gives you a way to filter out the ideas that you may like now and may make may be really successful at some parts of what you want, but may detract from others. This section explores the question of, at what cost? I read a book called Redefining Success, Still Making Mistakes by Brett Wilson, where he tells the story of him getting to the top while paying insufficient attention to his health and family and all the regret that goes along with that. This section is designed to stop those mistakes before they start. Curtis's filter document likely has him looking at a business that allows flexibility to spend time that he wants with his family, because that is more important than a multi-million dollar business that takes up all his time. This filtered document looks at not only your goals, but your anti-goals, and that is a very valuable concept not often discussed. Your filter document will be tailored to you, the reader. This is not a read it cover to cover, type of book, not in one sitting that is, it has exercises to do. 
To get the full value of this book, you need to do them. This book is therefore far better suited to read rather than listen to as an audiobook, unless you get very friendly with the pause button. Part 2 is called Finding Your Time. This section is about time management, time blocking, and dealing with distractions. There are a lot of books on time management and time blocking out there. The philosophies in this section are likely not going to be new to you, but Curtis goes in-depth with his application of said philosophies. His methods may not translate to you directly, as you may not be working at home with three young kids unknowingly doing everything they can to distract you, but you can certainly tweak and tailor these for your personal needs. Here are a couple of his examples that were discussed. One, when Curtis was working in an office environment with other employees, he started using these larger pink headphones for a certain time block for focusing and chose to be far less responsive while he was wearing those. This then communicated, I'm focusing, and he trained other people not to distract him during his focus time. Curtis, in his working from home environment, set up his office and his equipment up totally to disallow distractions. There's a neat little nugget on how he set up his phone so Cynthia, his wife, could vent if need be without distracting him, while also allowing an avenue for her to get a hold of him if indeed there was an emergency. One concept discussed is plan your week and plan your day. Is this a new concept? No. But this concept is so valuable, it bears repeating over and over. If you do it now, you can likely do it better, and if you don't, read this section twice. Curtis goes into detail on his method. If you haven't done this type of planning before, start with his method. Change it after a while to suit you. If you already plan, I bet there is some part you can use to improve your current method. Part 3 is on testing your ideas. This section gets very specific into several ways to see how the world res will respond to your idea, your business. It gets into how to search the net's blogs and podcasts and websites to see if your idea will solve someone's problem. It gets into how to find the right language to use when talking about the problem your business will solve. It talks about how to test the different ways to get the word out and having some feedback at which one works best. This section has less value if you haven't dug deep in the first two sections. Read it the first time so you know what's coming. Then go back to it later. There is a ton of work to be done in this section, but it is all predicated on the first parts already being done. So the Art of Focus is designed for you to do the work up front. It is finding the right wall for that ladder, and it digs into whether or not your business is the right ladder to get you to the top. As always, Curtis makes good points and then backs them up with a book reference and or personal experience. This book gets you to ask a lot of questions of yourself, so you must be willing to stop and think about the answer. If you are willing to spend the time searching yourself for those answers and willing to do the work, then the answer to the question, should I read it, is yes. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to Should I Read It? To support the show, you can leave me a review in iTunes or a heart or a star in whatever podcast player you use. These help more people find the show. If you want to get more reading done, you should get an Audible membership. If you use curtismichaelca slash recommends slash audible, that will help the production of the show financially.